Phillies baseball, though, and they're in Florida. Uh, I guess we'll start with that and talk about uh, what you saw. I get the goodbye, Jeremy Hellickson, after what took place last night. Yeah, he definitely made a statement to the Marlins that uh, he could really help them. Uh, Marlins probably still have a real shot at the wild card, and I think it would be unfortunate if the Marlins did not go all out and really do what it took to get them over the edge. Now, they just they just lost uh, Chin Ming Wong. Uh, they just signed as a free agent, and uh, he was their big pickup this offseason. So now they need two starters. So they were interested in Helixson before they needed just one. Now they need two. Uh, I really think that, that they uh, they need somebody like Helixson to help stabilize that rotation. Frank, I want to follow up and ask you about Helixson because he's had two very, very good outings. I mean, eight innings, one run, eight strikeouts. Last night, six innings, no runs. You know, Helixson looked kind of uh, frustrated they wouldn't let him go out for the seventh inning. But I want to ask you, how does this affect his value? Because we're getting close to that point where, you know, teams are calling about guys and they're being told no, the asking price is too high. Whereas Helixson, the asking price may be a lot more favorable. Yeah, I think Helixson, he's certainly not doing himself any uh, harm by pitching so well. I, I think that... Uh um, Helixson, I think he's extra motivated right now. I, he's not pitching just for this season to try to get himself onto a contender, but he's also pitching for his next contract. So, so a guy like Helixson is very motivated to do well, and it kind of puts the Phillies in a really good position. So so early on, he might not have felt that pressure, but, but now it's not just about this year. It's also about next year. So Helixson is, is going to give you uh, his best. Frank Close is with us. The Phillies mailbag is open, so we'll get to some of those questions. And Frank Milton wants to know, does Cameron Rupp feel any pressure from Knapp coming up to take his job? Knapp is putting up good numbers in the minors. I think I think Knapp is putting up decent numbers. I don't think there's anything that's really uh, going to make the Phillies say that, oh, no, we have to absolutely promote this, this guy and give him the starting job right now. Uh, I think he's played well enough that it merits a call up this September. Uh, if Carlos Ruiz happens to be moved, uh, and really there hasn't been much chatter about that, but if Carlos Ruiz happens to be moved, he could come up sooner. But the Phillies usually add a third catcher, like most teams do when rosters expand. So I'm pretty sure Knapp will be will be up then. But in terms of Rupp worrying about his job per se, um, I think going into next year, you're looking at a situation where where Knapp and Rupp are probably your two catchers. And whoever plays the best is going to play more. And, and I really think that there's really not going to be any doubt about that, uh, who, whoever's playing better. Now, Rupp certainly is doing a nice job if it gets to the point where it looks like you got two starters and, and maybe the Phillies have a trade chip down the line. But uh, I don't think he needs to worry about his job. I think uh, you know we could still see Knapp or, or Jorge Alfaro move if uh, one of them uh, really steps up and the other one is still playing well. So... Uh, but that type of thing doesn't really work itself out until they're they're major league ready and they're showing that they, they belong there in the major leagues. And then a subject that we uh, talked about before we had you on, Frank, was uh, Ryan Howard. I know that he's pinch hit at times on the road trip. I know that he gets a spot start here and there. Uh, Eric wants to know, uh, is there any truth to the rumors that the Phillies are taking feelers for Ryan Howard before the deadline? I don't think that there is any any doubt that that's, that report is legitimate. Uh, you know, Brian Howard is somebody who's a left-handed hitter, and he's got 14 home runs. Uh, we just saw BJ, now called Melvin Upton, traded today, which which who would have ever thought? Uh, Melvin Upton was the epitome of the bad contract the last couple of years, and yet, uh, even though this year is not his last year, he got moved because teams are looking for any type of power that they can get. So, would not be shocked if, if a team called the Phillies, uh, maybe to perhaps confirm that the Phillies would be willing to pay Howard's salary the rest of the year, and they would pay the buyout. You know, so once that's settled, uh, then they know that, that he's somebody that they could possibly grab that would cost them a lot down the line. Uh, so whoever acquires Howard, if somebody does, they're not obligated beyond this year. And let's face it, they're not even obligated to put him on their postseason roster if they make the playoffs. So so this could be a really low-risk acquisition for a team who decides to take him, provided that the Phillies do the what we, what we all think is the obvious at this point, which is to, to pay all that money. 
We're talking with Frank Close, our Phillies insider with 97.3 ESPN.com. This is the Phillies mailbag every Tuesday. Frank, I want to ask you about Aaron Althair. Uh, you know, Greg asked who will go when the Phillies add outfielder Aaron Althair back at the end of the month. And before you answer, I want to caveat that by saying, for those who didn't hear, Aaron Althair is now at Triple A. He's basically been rising through the ranks of the organization in a pretty expedited manner. And it seems like he's basically, if the Phillies decide to trade somebody in the outfield, he's the obvious guy to slot in, right? Yeah, and I wouldn't read too much into him going to Triple A. Often these rehab assignments, are, it's a matter of who's home. Uh, it's not necessarily a matter of, well, he's got to play at all levels first. I mean, he ended up playing in the Gulf Coast League a few weeks ago, which is the lowest level. And the only reason he was there is because there was an all-star break that would have took place during their, their uh, um, during his rehab. So uh, I think he's going to be activated as, as soon as tomorrow. Uh, and and the problem is, yes, there's there's, there's a lot of spots. I think that uh, the Phillies may try to move a Borjos or, or, or Ashy sooner. And one possibility that a lot of people haven't really mentioned is uh, Cody Ashy is hitting around 230. Could they move him back to the minor leagues? I mean, he's got a minor league option. That's, that's something that they could easily do is send Cody Ashy to the minor leagues. Uh, right now, I think it's pretty clear from what we've seen from Ashy lately that he is probably not going to be getting a starting out, outfield job. Uh, Peter Borjos had that nice run. Uh, he's not a part of their plans. I mean, what's going to have to happen is, is that, that they're going to have to play Aaron out there no matter what. I mean, they, they lost out on all these months of, of perhaps development and, and the ability to see what he could do. Uh, you know, so but it's, it's imperative now that between now and at the end of the season, the Phillies see what Aaron Altair can do. And it could come at uh, Cody Ashey's expense, could come at Peter Borges' expense. Uh, if a team can use a piece like him, more Orioles, they were in on Melvin Upton Jr. Uh, they were trying to swap bad contracts. Uh, perhaps they need a right fielder to fill in for Mark Trumbo in the late innings. Uh, you know, somebody like that, I'm sure, could, could take Borges off the Phillies' hands. But... Uh, so I think right now, when we get to September, we're going to see Aaron Altair at one position, Nick Williams at the other, corner outfield position. And really to do that, you need to subtract uh, both Ashy and, and Borges for that to happen. Frank Close is with us. The mailbag's open. The mailbag works every Monday. We take the questions for the 97.3 ESPN Monday mailbag for the Phillies and then talk about them here on Tuesdays on the Sports Bash. It's Frank Close at Frank Close with a K on Twitter, and Frank uh, Baseball George with a question in this week's mailbag. And I always like, A, somebody that has no shame in calling themselves Baseball George, and B, a question that's good enough to generate this kind of response. How could competing in 2016 for the wild card by signing quality free agents deter rebuilding? Are too many good players a problem? That's Baseball George's question for you. Uh, a, lot, a lot of listeners might know Baseball George. He's, he's notorious to calling into every every possible Philly show that ever existed, and that's what he goes by. Uh, but, but George is, is, I think he's a little frustrated this year that the Phillies did not find some free agents and simply go for it. And the way I look at the Phillies roster, when you look at, at the, the outfield, we just talked about Aaron Altair needing to play. We talked about Cody Ashy needing to play. Certainly Ojubel Herrera was going to take up center field. Uh, you know, second base, if, you know, the Phillies needed to see if Cesar Hernandez was a starter. Shortstop, they pretty much know J.P. Crawford's coming. Freddie Galvis just is kind of the placeholder. Michael Franco's the third. Catchers, you know, we're waiting to see what happens with Andrew Knapp and Jorge Alfaro. So, so really there's no, there's no offensive free agent that really would have uh, benefited the Phillies in any way uh, because the Phillies need to see these people play and see, need to see who's going to be there long term. And then in terms of the pitching staff, they have all these young players. They did grab a couple veterans like Ellickson and Morton. And when it comes down to it, uh, everything worked out as it was supposed to work out. You can catch Frank Close always on Twitter, at Frank Close, at Frank Close 973. We'll see if we can cue Frank back up here in a second, see if everything's okay with his phone here, Pete. He's got good stuff. He's got good takes. I know this. I know that. And then he, well, one name in the outfield he didn't mention was Tyler Goodell, who I think has to stay up. Isn't Tyler Goodell a uh, Rule 5? Yes, he has to stay up because he's a Rule 5. 
And uh, Frank had to go, apparently. So we appreciate Frank for joining us.